All right. Okay. So uh, let's move on to the next talk. Uh, you know, I would take a, a great pleasure to introduce next speaker, Professor uh, Xi Xie uh, from uh, San Yashen University in Guangzhou, China. He graduated uh, from Stanford University uh, and got his PhD in 2014. And then he worked as a postdoc researcher at MIT uh, until 2016. Uh, then he joined uh, the University, uh, Sun Yashen University in Guangzhou. Professor Xi has been focusing on fundamental research on micro nanosystem for biological uh, biomedical applications. He published uh, 54 papers in journals, including uh, Nature Series journals, ACN Nanos, Advanced Functional Materials, and so on and so forth. And he got a, a numerous uh, award so far as a rising star. Uh, you know, i uh, just name a few. He was awarded by MIT Technology Review Innovator and 35 in China. And he also won the Outstanding Science Award, uh, Science Scientific Award of a Chinese Institute of Electronics. And the last year, again, he, uh, he got the Microsystem Nano Engineer Summit 2019 Young Scientist Award. Uh, without further uh, introduction, I'd like to, uh, uh, you know, uh, Welcome, uh, please join me to welcome Professor Sia to give us a talk today. So Professor Sia, the podium is yours, please. Thanks Professor Tui for, for the nice introduction. Hello everyone, my name is Si Sia. I'm from Sun Yasen University, located in Guangzhou, China. It's very wonderful that the uh, ICAN platform has run well and have recruited so many great professors all over the world to share, share their research. Also, thanks Professor Ting Hong Tui and Professor Alice Zhang for the opportunity to give a talk tonight. It's my honor to introduce my work to so many scholars all over the world. The topic of my talk is Meaning Invasive Bioelectronics. Here is the instruction of myself. I did undergraduate in Srinathan University and then went to Stanford University for PhD degree. I have been studying material science and engineering. After I finished my PhD, I went to NIT for postdoc research, working in the lab of Professor Robert Langer and Professor Dan Anderson. On 2016, I joined Srinathan University as a professor in School of Electronics and Information Engineering. And at the same time, I became an adjunct professor in the First affiliated hospital in our institute. My last research mainly focused on the field of bioelectronics. As we may know, biosensing is the key to obtain biomedical information, which could serve as the basis of understanding the life activity and provide valuable guidance for disease therapy. Biosensing technology has been facilitating the development of biomedical research. Over the past decade, we have witnessed the emerging of biosensing for in vitro, in, in vitro diagnostics sensors. Sensors for recording actual cellular signals and non-invasive sensors for wearable applications. Currently, most of the existing sensors have been applied to detect signal from the outside of bio biological cell or from the outside of animal or human body. However, the inside environment of cells or body contain much more complicated and valuable information, which is the fundamental resources to review life activity and disease. Although it's safer to detect biological signal from outside of the biological objects, the current biosensors still suffer from difficulty to detect signals inside the cell or inside the body in a safe manner. To solve this critical problem, I have been developing the technique of mini invasive bioelectronics in order to achieve detection of the internal information of cell and body without causing disruption or safety concern to the light. In specific, I have employed the, this meaning in basic technique 
to detect the information inside the reticle cell and detect information in vivo. We have already achieved significant progress on these two projects for the past several years. Now, let me talk about the first project where I developed the meaning in basic cell sensor for cell application. For the cell application, the key problem we try to solve was how to penetrate cell membrane safely. If we can go through the cell membrane, then we can do manipulate application. For example, we can deliver drug into the cell, stimulate or detect information within the cell. This application was still difficult to achieve because the cell penetration may easily harm the cell viability. To solve this problem, the meaning in basic dial sensing for cell application I developed is relied on a platform of nano size needle in an array. I use this nano needle to penetrate cells by culturing the cell on top of the nano needles. In order to improve the penetration efficiency, this thermal technique could be coupled with the nano needle to penetrate the cell. This external technique could be ranging from laser, electrical field, mechanical force, and chemical coating. In specific, I come up with the technique of using electric field to enhance penetration. And this technique turns out to be highly effective and useful. The nano needle are often bar compatible with the, with the cell. The diameter of our needle is, is about 200 nanometer, much smaller compared to the cell size. It turns out the cell viability and cell function can be maintained after cell penetration. Once the cell membrane is penetrated, the nano needle could access to the internal environment of the cell. This nano needle can thus be applied as a tool to deliver drug into light cell. They can also be applied as flow to detect electrical information and biochemical information inside the cell. Compared to conventional single nano flow that the cell are treated one by one at one time, the advantage of many nano needle in an array is that many cells can be treated at the same time. This year, I have also published two review articles on advanced material and advanced functional material to summarize this technology. I have done since uh, system metric work on this technology from material fabrication of the nano needle array, device, device integration, mechanism study of cell penetration and cell safety, and application on drug delivery and bio sensing. This nano needle was fabricated by multiple steps of nano fabrication technology using nanopolis membrane as a uh, as a template. We use ALP to deposit aluminum oxide on all the surface of the template and then use chlorine to add the aluminum oxide on top. At the end, we use oxygen etching to add the polymer substrate to expose the nano needle structure. The here are the SEM showing the structure of the Nano needle. The nano needle has a hollow structure with a nano channel extending through the substrate. Therefore, liquid solution could be go through the nano channel from the substrate bottom to the upper space. The diameter of the nano needle is smaller than 300 nanometer, and the geometry can be well tilted. For example, we can modulate the diameter, height, and distance of the nano needle. In addition, in addition to aluminum oxide nano needle, we could even make nano needle with conductive metal. Dependent on the specific application, we can make nano needle with desirable geometry and materials. 
then we when we culture cell on top of the nano needle, we basically care about whether the cell activity was changed and whether the cell membrane is penetrated by the sub needle. Based on my previous study, I found that the cell viability is not affected and the gene expression is also really changed. However, we found that the penetration penetration efficiency is quite low. If the cell was cultured on top of the nano needle array without applying any external force, therefore we conclude that external techniques are required to enhance the penetration. In addition, I have also studied how nano needle with much smaller size in the range of 20 nanometer, which we call the nano spike of cell activities. We found that the nano spikes are also safe to most of the cell type. However, for immune cell, in, for immune cell type, the nano spike, the nano spikes, nano spike structure could specifically activate their immune response. We found that the nano spike could produce mechanical stress on the on the uh, on, on the cell membrane to enhance the opening of potassium ion channel on the membrane. The upflux of potassium ion could further trigger the activation of inflammasome. This phenomenon is, interest, is interest, interesting in that the immune activation is induced by physical nanostructure rather than by biochemical signal that have been found traditionally. So through the above results, we found that the cell penetration by simply culturing cell on nanometer is inefficient. Therefore, electric field was incorporated to help the nanometer penetrate the cell membrane. Here we integrate the nanometer with an electro system to generate electric paths. We also integrate the, the, the nano needle with a microfluidic device to mediate solution delivery. We calculate the, how the electric field is localized on the, on the cell membrane by control simulation. As seen from the result, the cell membrane, here the cell membrane initially deformed around the nano needle without being penetrated. When two electrode was placed, in the top, up in the upper media and underneath the substrate, the electric field could be generated between the two electrodes. The cell culture, which the cell culture media, which is conducted electrolyte solution, is built over the underneath the underneath microfluidic channel, the upper media, and as as well as the nano channel in the nano needle. Although the side wall of the nano needle is non-conducted oxide, the, the solution in the nano channel is conducted electrolyte solution, which could transport both electric field and chemical molecules. Therefore, when electric pulse was applied, the electric field could go through the nano channel and be highly focused on the nano needle teeth. So based on our result, the electric field could be highly localized on the on the tip of the nano needle, cause the rupture of the local cell membrane. Here, the curve and the color indicates the strength of the electric field. We can see that only the cell membrane on top of the nano needle, on top of the nano needle tip, could experience high electrical field. This requires much lower voltage, which could be as low as 10 volts to cause membrane polarization. Therefore, electrical polarization could preferably uh, occur on this small area of the cell membrane, while most of the other cell membrane could maintain intact. The key advantage of this technique is that the cell polarization could be highly, is highly controllable. By tuning the electrical condition, we can control the opening of the cell membrane at any time. 
Once the cell membrane was penetrated by the enamel of we could deliver bar molecule into the cell through the hollow enamel needle. For example, we can use the micro, microfluidic device to transport to transport drug molecules. Once cell membrane is open, the drug molecule could go into the cell by both fully diffusion and electrophoresis force. A key advantage of this delivery technique is that the delivery, the delivery is through physical cell operation. The delivery could be less dependent on the drug molecule types and the cell type. By thus, the, intercell the intercellular content could also be fused from the intercellular space to the underneath microfluidic device through the nanotechnos in the in the middle. By collecting the extracted solution that is containing uh, inter intercellular species for further analysis, the intercellular content could be profiled at different time points. In traditional technique for commercial technique, cell informant Cell information detection could only be performed from generally could only be performed from the actual cellular space. If detection or intercellular component is needed, it generally required required cell lysis to extract the intercellular material for analysis. However, since the cell was killed, the detection or intercellular con contents on the same cell could only be performed for one time. It's infeasible to detect on the same set or cell at multiple endpoints. So by, so by using my technique, the extraction of intercellular content is meaning invasive to the cell without killing the cell through multiple cycle of extractions. Therefore, the detection could be performed at different time points so that the expression of the intercellular component could be dynamically tracked. Here are the results. We deliver about drug molecule into the cell to prove that the cell membrane could be opened. Here is one example of DNA plasma delivery. The DNA could not go through the cell membrane by themselves. If the DNA was delivered into the cell, it can guide the cell to is plus reference protein. Here we saw that by applying electric pulse with voltage as low as 20 volts, the DNA was, was able to be delivered into the cell with very high efficiency. As we can see, most of the cell is played reference. We also stain the light, the light cell with cooling reference. The cell could maintain very high variability, even multiple cycles of electrical pollution was applied. Based on these results, we can see that the nano needle could uh, couple with electric pulse could penetrate the cell with very high efficiency and very high safety. And for the uh, for the sensing. When the nano needle penetrates the cell membrane, the cytosol could be filled through the nano channel to the external channel. Here we analyze typical intercellular enzyme, test phase three, which is associated with the apoptosis activity of cell. We could extract the we could extract the intercellular contents every three hours for analysis without killing the cell. Therefore, we can we, we could detect the dynamic trends of test phase three in cell on exactly the same set of cell. In my recent work, we further extend the nanometer platform for circulating tumor cell CTC detection and, man and manipulation. Here we Functionalize the nano needle with spiky structure and antibody to achieve the better capture of cancer cell. This will allow instant regulation and sensing of the captured CTC on a single integrated device. 
the CTC could be captured on the device through a microfluidic, a microfluidic system. And then we could deliver a biomolecule into the CTC insta to regulate the activity using the same device. This could allow the detection and profile of CTC in blood sample from patient using a single niche device. All right, then let me move to the second project, the in vivo application. That is, we try to extend our meaning in basic dial sensing technology from the micro, micro scale application itself to the macro scale of tissue or even whole animal body. The key problem we try to solve was how to penetrate skin layer safely. If we can go through the skin, then we can do many good application in vivo. For example, we can deliver drug or detect information inside the body. For safety concern, it requires it require the technique to be minimally invasive and biocompatible. So in order to penetrate skin painless and safely, we develop a platform based on microneedle, microneedle technology. The idea of microneedle is that the lens or microneedle is in the range of 500 to 800 micrometer, which is so small that it can penetrate the skin, but without reaching to the, to the nerve and the blood vessel in the thermis level. Therefore, it can penetrate the skin without causing pain and blooding. The microneedle could directly access to the interstitial, the interstitial fluid underneath the skin and hence enable detection of our information in vivo. By integrating microneedle with electrical sensor, the bar information could also be readily recorded and even uploaded to the mobile device. So in my lab, we have already developed multiple techniques to fabricate microneedle array with different material or structures. For example, we could make conducted metal microneedle using laser machining. We could also fabricate functional nanostructure on the metal microneedle surface to enhance the detection sensitivity when applied as sensors. Meanwhile, we could also use polym uh, use polymer with, uh, we could also make polymer microneedle with nanopolis structure using molding technique and also use degradable polymer to prepare microneedle. Here we load the we, we could load small molecular drug in the microneedle kit. When the microneedle was inserted on the skin, the microneedle kit could be quickly dissolved by the interstitial fluid underneath the skin to release the drug. So for this type of microneedle, it could be dissolved quickly and release the drug to the body. So here we use the degradable microneedle for disease treatments. Here, when the microneedle, when, when the microneedle was placed on the skin, the microneedle penetrates the skin without causing pain. At the same time, the microneedle tip could be readily dissolved by the interstitial fluid and releasing the load drug in the, to, to the body to treat disease. So by using this technique, we have demonstrated that the microneedle can be used to treat disease, including neuropathic pain, hypertension, subcutaneous tumor, and release of pelodiotis. So um, on the other hand, by using conducted microneedle, we can also fabricate microneedle into a biosensor to detect body pulse signal underneath the skin. So here we use laser machining to prepare, to prepare conductive microneedle and then fabricate sec secondary nanostructure. That is hybrid reduced black oxide 
incorporated with platinum nanoparticles on the nano uh, on the micro needle surface. The nano structure could, be, could enable the micro needle to specifically specifically detect reactive oxygen species (ROS), which is generally associated with inflammation. So here we further also here we further develop a degradable polymer coating to protect the surface nanostructure when the nanometers are inserted into the skin. Once in contact with the, with, with the interstitial fluid, the coating could be quickly dissolved, exposing the nanostructure to detect the biosignal. So here, here are the SEM units showing the morphology of the microneedle sensor in, in the surface nanostructure. This sensor possesses very high sensitivity on detection of RS underneath the skin, the skin of mice. The microneedle sensor was based on a three electro system. It could be pressed on skin to detect the fluctuation of RS in vivo. This could allow real time and instant recording of the physiological signal with minimal disruption to the body. In addition to micro needle, we also develop a compatible electro that can be implanted in vivo for long term. Many artificial electro have been suffering from the issue of information in vivo. This will greatly affect the sensing stability and accuracy in vivo. For example, implantable glucose electrodes enable, could enable continuous monitor of, of blood glucose, which is highly promising for close blood treatment of diabetes. However, implanted glucose electrode could easily cause inflammation underneath the skin, making the signal become inaccurate right after one day. For commercial sensor, it generally requires the patient to do blood tests to calibrate the sensor every day. So here, I developed a with ionic polymer that could be coated on the on the glucose electrode to improve its dark compatibility. This coating could greatly reduce the non-specific adhesion of protein and hence inhibits the occurrence of information. So here, we can see that uh, the, our implanted electrode costs much less information compared to the control electrode when they are implanted in the mice for a couple of days. Also, the electrode could be implanted on mice to record the flow the glucose signal continuously. Here, here are two typical results for demonstration. So here is the control electrode without coating. We can see that the glucose signal, the glucose sensor, shows in accuracy quickly after the implantation after one day. This is very likely due to the information of the of the or the implanted flash hole, and it required, required calibration to collect the signal every day. So here, the, as the result show, the red curve indicates the recorded signal, and the blue curve is the accurate glucose level that are cal calibrated by the blood test. We can see that the signal becomes inaccurate quickly after one day. If the electrode was coated with the, our biocompatible polymer, the sensor could record the glucose accurately without even without calibration. The recording could maintain stable for over one week, which is which is greatly improved compared to the non-coated sensor. We can see that the recording signal of the of the red curve overlap were very well with the blue curves. This exciting result was published on Nature DNA with the improvement of the 
Vì là sau vào trường thật thật vật thì the meaning in basic sense of quite more useful application in the future. So to summary, our lab has been working on meaning in basic browsing techniques. We applied sub nano needle or micro needle to penetrate biological objects with very high safety. This enables us to detect biological signal inside cell or inside the body, which is incapable to achieve with traditional non-invasive methods. Our technique provides much more important application on cell chip, wearable device, and even implantable device. We believe the advance of meaning invasive dial sensing will greatly prolongs the development of our medical research and disease therapy. And at the end, I would like to thank my team in Shenyang University and many collaborators in our affiliated hospital. Our lab contains students and staff with very different backgrounds from electrical engineering, material science, and biomedicine. Many biological experiments and animal works was greatly supported by our biomedical collaborators. We also would like to thank the funding spots from NCSF and Guangdong province. And thanks everyone for listening. Here is my contact information as well as the code of our last of our last website. Please let us know if you uh, if you have questions. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Xie, for your uh, very interesting talk today. Uh, so there, they do have some uh, questions from the audience. Uh, the first question from uh, New Jersey University uh, in the United States, uh, his, her name, I believe, uh, is Olivia. The question is, uh, can this nano needle array be used for mechanical behavior study of cells during the cell culture? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. It's dependent on the, uh, dependent on the material that we use to, to make the nano needle. For our work, we generally use uh, aluminum oxide or metal material to make a nano needle. And this, ma this material are, uh, are tough and they, they are hard to be deformed. So for our nano needle, we generally don't use them to, to study the cell mechanics. However, we can also use some soft polymer to prepare the nano needle. For example, we can use some, now we, we have already developed a technique to, to make PDNS nano needle using molding techniques. So for PDNS, they have much greater softness and they can be even deformed by cell. In this case, it's likely to be applied for cell mechanics study. Uh, actually, we have already explored, explored to uh, explore to use the PDNS nano needle to study the the uh, the beating of cardi cardio mouse sites, which is beating quickly in, in the cell culture condition. So hopefully, we can get some more promising results to share next time. Thank you for, for the answer. Uh, there is another question from Peking University, and his name is Lee. Uh, the question is for the uh, electrical operation, why it is that you test for the cell, cells, uh, single cells, how much difference from different type of cells, like uh, some dead cells and living cells, so when you do the testing, or what's the outcome? Oh, yeah. So yeah, at, at this point, uh, most cells that we, tests are mostly cancer cell type. So we have already test about, uh, about six or seven type, types of cancer cell, like including uh, HeLa, NCF7, and PC cells, and Cho cell, and so on. And for our six turn, now we try to use them for electrocorporation or even primary cell type. But at this point, we to only achieve very low efficiency to deliver DNA into, into primary cell type. And also we test some electrical correlation even on immune cell types like, in, like T cell 
or, or dengue T cell. But for those cases, it did not success at, at this point. So it's still, uh, I think that's still somewhat to, to include the efficiency that is likely by tuning the electrical condition and also change the surface modification to enhance the, the interaction of the cell with the nano needle. Because uh, the electrical pollution required the cell has a very close interface with the nano needle so that the, the electric field could be better localized on the cell membrane. So the cell interface is very important and we need to do more optimization on it. Okay, there is a last question. Actually, there are many questions. I want to pick up another one. So, can you comment on the mechanical strength, durability, and the biocompatibility of your nano needles? I know you are using different materials to to construct yeah. your your needles. So, can you comment in general the mechanical strength, durability, and biocompatibility? Yeah. Uh, uh, so for. For the bar compatibility of our nail needle, we have been studying the uh, even studying the gene expression, like when we culture the cell on the nano needle. And we see actually there are very very few changes on the gene expression. That is, uh, that is likely that the however that we also found that the actually if you only culture the cell on the nail needle, the needle actually did not penetrate the cell too much. So that is, that is likely the reason why the, why the cell behavior was not changed so much. However, after we applied uh, electric pulse to penetrate the cell membrane, the, the, gene, is pre, the gene expression could be changed more, uh, change, change more significantly. So in our case, it, uh, if you just culture the cell on the needle without, with, without applying electric pulse. Uh, I, I would say that, that the bar, compat, bar compatibility is quite, quite late. If you try to open, open holes on the cell membrane, use electric pulse, then we really need to consider the, the safety issue. So in our case, we generally don't, uh, at, at the most, we we apply electric pulse per cell at the most for about a cycle every day. So we did not continuously uh, open holes on the cell. We, we open the, we polish the cell and let the cell wait for about an hour or one hour to, to rest. And then we could open the holes on the cell again and again. And also for the uh, compatibility, so because our nano needle, they, 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 are very, they, they are based on tough material, so they, they are not easily deformed. So then generally, the, the nano needle could maintain intact when they was cultured with the cell. However, the cell also found that to be they, they, they are less they are less spread compared to on a flat substrate. Also, the cell movement is also slower compared to the cells that are cultured on the flat substrate. So that are, those are the phenomena that we, we observe. Okay, thank you very much again. Thank you for your wonderful talk, uh, Professor Xie. I think before you leave, the ICANX Talks will uh, deliver a certificate for you to honor your uh, wonderful talk. Uh, Professor Zhang, uh, where is the certificate on behalf of the, the, the forum? Uh, we would like to deliver the certificate to you. We we'll appreciate to your, your, your wonderful talk today. Yeah, this is a, a certificate. Uh, appreciate your connect the world and the universe, Professor Xi. This is for you. All right, thank you very much. It's my honor to have the talk here. It's a very wonderful experience. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thank great. you all. Yeah. Uh, I'd so like to get back to Professor right. Zhang uh, to conclude the, the, the forum today. Professor Zhang, I'm please. already here. So, Tian Huang, thank you so much. Wonderful job, Dad. So actually, I enjoy the talks very much, but it's really running late. So I have to say, you know, yeah, 
Uh, today's talk is already you know, finished, so we have some uh, advertisement for next week. Next week we will have as Nano Rising Stars, two beautiful girls, Miss Mi Kim from uh, Korea and the Nancy Lu from US, Wei Gao, yeah, he is from Caltech. So uh, three of them will get on the stage as uh, chosen for the Rising Stars you know, from ACS Nano, so they will deliver wonderful talks too. So next week, these three will get on the stage. And we also have a bunch of speakers will get, you know, on ICANX in the coming days. So yeah, if you didn't follow us, please follow us on Twitter and see the YouTube to find ICANX for all these video replays and uh, give us suggestions. And for the My Young Scientist the forum will start in July, so July 7 to 10. So do mark on your calendar and to join us on this wonderful event. You will see many, many of these young science stars in that forum. And uh, they are going to deliver wonderful works. They are going to give us a big surprise. So that's on the July, uh, you know, 7 to 10. And uh, then tomorrow we'll have a Chinese session. Uh, it's talk about Yin He Zhong Guo Xin. It's majority talk about CPU. So uh, Professor Cheng Xu, he's my colleague in Peking University. So Mingtian uh, that's the end of this week. I see you next week. I can ask talks to connect the world and the universe. So we can waiting for you every Friday and this I can ask the talks stage. Okay, see you next week. Have a good, good weekend. Hello. Yeah, it's my friend's Chinese. <laughs> 呃,就对,一个肯定是这个,另外这个事件也是太恶劣了。Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 I cannot start my, uh,